Hi, this is Zach Rue with Ruggiero Piano. Today I want to talk to you a little more in depth about the Yamaha Smart Pianist app. This is a free app you can get for both Android and Apple devices, and it's a really great controller for a lot of Yamaha's digital instruments. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First off, when you look at the piano room uh, on the main screen, you see the Yamaha CFX Grand. From here, we can play the instrument, and that's what you'll hear. We can also very easily change instruments by swiping left and right. So for example, the Bosendorfer. That has a little more of a soft and mellow tone to it. Um, you can also raise and lower the lid, which changes the sound. So you've got some, a few other pianos here, Studio Grand, Honky Tonk, Upright. Um, I'm connected to a P515, so that's uh, you'll see the instruments and settings reflected there. If we go to the top right-hand corner, um, this allows you to change different settings within the piano room. So like I said, you can, you can raise and lower the lid, but you can also change the brightness, so you can have a more mellow or a more bright piano. So for example, versus if we go much brighter, and you can double tap the, the uh, slider to bring it back to the default. Um, touch curve is really great because you can have a, a harder to play piano, or I shouldn't say harder necessarily, I guess I mean to say um, you have to play a little harder to get more volume. That's one, that's hard two, and then we've got a soft two, you'll see, you'll hear more volume. although I didn't play the keys any, any harder. So you can adjust that to your preference. So you've also got environment, so we can change the type of room we're in, which will change the type of reverb you hear. And you can also increase and decrease the depth of that reverb. So if we really crank it up, it sounds like we're in a much larger room. Um, then you've got master tuning. So some parts of the world, 440 is not the standard. And in the past, 440 wasn't the standard, so you can adjust that. Um, virtual resonance modeling is the next four settings here, and these are basically um, subtle phenomenon about an acoustic piano that gives, in this, gives it its richness and its character. So you can adjust things like damper, string, aliquot, and body resonance to kind of bring out the presence of the instrument or dial it back. Um, the key off sampling is just a very subtle tone that you can increase and decrease that occurs when you release a key. It's a very um, nuanced sort of thing. The half point pedaling uh, you can change when the damper is engaged and disengaged, so you can have basically a longer pedal stroke before the, the damper is engaged. And then the last thing here is the each key setting. So you'll notice you have a volume and a tune option. So for every single note, you can change both the volume and the tuning depending on your preference. We all hear a little differently, so it's nice to be able to adjust that. So if we back out of here and go back to the piano room, some other things just on this page I want to show you are the, is the record option in the bottom. So if you tap on that, we've got the ability to record in both audio and MIDI formats, which is really great, so you can do either. Um, the next button down there is a quick registration sort of thing. So if I liked the settings I had, for example, if I adjusted one of the pianos and I liked the way it sounded, I could hit Save Settings, name it you know, a specific setting, like let's just do um, Test, for example. So now, if I were to change a few things, like... Uh, Let's change some of these piano room settings, for example. Let's cut this stuff down. And we've kind of changed from the ideal, so we want to get back to where we were. If we hit done, return to that registration, hit, hit that test, it's going to recall all of our settings. So now we're back to, to where we were. So that's nice. Um, the next thing down here is the in the bottom left-hand corner is the metronome. So you can do a lot with this. You can change the time signature. You can tap in your tempo, which is always nice. Or you can just increase or decrease it with the, the slider here. You can adjust the volume compared to the piano. And you can also add a bell to the one um, when you're playing. So that's really helpful as well. And the last thing down here on the left is the mixer. So we'll get into the what, what it means when it says left and layer a little bit later in the video. But just know for the moment that you can adjust like the uh, rhythm section behind you and you can adjust your piano balance based off of these things. Moving on to the next menu option, if you click on the menu, you'll, you'll notice you'll see 
uh, voice. So if we click on that, this is where you're going to find all the different instruments that your, uh, that your keyboard or digital piano has available. So if we tap on the CFX concert grant in the middle, it's going to bring up all of our different types of pianos we can choose from. And also if you click on the folder, you're going to see the like electric pianos, for example. And also you've got that famous DX sound. organs and uh, clavichord. I like the jazz organs. Well, it's got like church organs. Uh, clavichords, like I said, vibraphone, strings. Um, I really like the nylon guitar. Also, you'll see down here um, the XG uh, folder. This is a lot of Yamaha's legacy instruments that you get on the P515. It's present on uh, some of their instruments, but not all of them. So you'll just have to check to see if it's on yours. Um, but it's the, you have a lot of instruments to choose from here. And you can even um, press the little star next to them, and it puts them in the favorite. So you can always have them ready to go. If we hit done and go back, um, I was talking about the uh, layer and left earlier. So if we click layer, that does exactly what you'd expect. It just layers another instrument on top. So now we have uh, strings and piano by default. And you can change that. Um, so if we tap on the strings, um, you can change it to any of the other instruments, but let's do like uh, dark pad. So you can kind of have an infinite amount of combinations there. Um, let's turn the layer off for a second and go to left. So left splits the keyboard at a certain note where everything below wherever I choose down here is the acoustic bass and then anything above it is the piano. So right now it's set on uh, it, that E2 and everything below is the acoustic bass. So you can actually combine the two too. So if we hit layer and left, we've got the piano and the pad layered and then the acoustic bass in, in, in the bass. So you can have a lot of fun with those combinations. Um, up in the top right hand corner, the gears button here does something a little different than it does in the piano room. So if we tap that, you're gonna see that you can change the octave of the different uh, uh, left layer and main uh, instruments. So that's pretty straightforward. And if you tap mixer, uh, this is what I was kind of talk about, talking about before, uh, where you have uh, some adjustability over the volume of each, of each layer. So if I back up and I hit layer again, um, and then I go down to the mixer in the bottom left, I'm going to pull down the layer so that it's kind of subtle in the background, which is more like what I would expect it to be. So now if you listen... So now it's nice and subtle. So that's the, uh, for the most part, that is the voice section of the Smart Pianist app. So let's go ahead and move on to the uh, song category on the menu item here. So this is where you're going to find any songs that you record, any built-in songs, or any uh, songs that you've downloaded from like iTunes, for example. So if we tap on uh, tap here and select a song, just starting off at the top, you have what's called 50 Classics. And these are just uh, selections that Yamaha's put on the instruments so, so that you can have digital sheet music of them, for example. So if I like, click on Canon here, it'll load it up, and then when we hit Done, it's going to show us the sheet music for it. So if I'll go ahead and play this, I'll turn the volume down. So you've got this built in, so you can read it off of the uh, the iPad. You can adjust the volume, the tempo. You can also adjust the, uh, you can transpose the song as well.
So you can adjust it to a speed and a key that you're comfortable with. Um, below the transpose option here, you see parts. So you've got backing left and right. So for example, if you were comfortable with playing the right hand and you, but you still wanted the uh, clav or the clavinova or your digital instrument to play the left hand, you could take the right out by tapping on right, and now it's only going to play the left while you then play the right over top of it, or vice versa. So you can see how that would be useful for, for learning. So if we tap on uh, the song again where it says Canon, it's going to bring us back to this page. So you can scroll through the different ones, uh, the different songs here, and, and practice them as you go. Um, you've got some built-in demo songs. Everybody's kind of familiar with those. Um, so if you go to user songs, let's record something real quick, and then you'll see how it shows up in your user song. So let's hit new recording, and we're just going to do a MIDI recording really quick. Let's go to new recording and then MIDI. So now I'm just going to play. So let's stop that and we're going to save it. So now if we play this back, you'll, you'll see my, uh, <laughs> my uh, sheet music there. And you can do all the same things like I mentioned before, like uh, transpose, change the tempo, change the volume. But that is going to show up in user song. So you'll see where it says MIDI there. The other um, uh, tab you see here, music library, you would see any music you've downloaded from iTunes, for example, in this folder. What this portion of the app will do is, is take any song that you've got on your, your device, um, analyze the audio of it, and then give you the chords, which is a really great way to jumpstart you into learning songs. I'm not going to demo it on this video today because, unfortunately, if I did play a song that was copyrighted, YouTube would remove the video. So you'll just have to take my word for it and try it out for yourself. It's a really great way to learn your favorite songs if you've got them downloaded. And so I think that's a really cool, powerful part of this app. Um, so that's the, the song portion. So if we click on the menu item again one more time and go down to Utility, this is just going to be the rest of the, the settings you're able to change on the keyboard. So up at the top, we've got transpose, and that does exactly what you'd expect. You can transpose the whole piano up and down um, by half steps. So for example, here we are just at zero. Pretty straightforward. And the same thing can be done for the song you see below. Um, tuning, master tuning, we already went over that earlier. Uh, keyboard settings. These A lot of these are the same as when you're looking at the piano room. But then you go down to system and you've got your you know, factory resets, auto power off, that type of thing. You'll notice that it says Dropbox here. So if you were to download the Dropbox app and you have an account, um, this is how you would export your recordings that you've done in the Smart Pianist app. So let's say I did that recording and I want to upload it, you can upload it to Dropbox and have that file from there. You can then send it or email it however you like. Um, some other items on here are going to be the audio recording format. So you have your option of AAC or WAV. I, know, I think WAV is a, is a more uncompressed uh, and high fidelity recording. Um, but that pretty much covers the Yamaha Smart Pianist app. Um, I think it's a really great controller app for Yamaha's digital instruments. And it, it's really intuitive to just touch what you want to change rather than pressing a button. So thanks for watching the videos, guys. And if you have any uh, comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and give us a, a like on this video. Until next time, thank you.